I'm a cowboy On a steel horse I ride And I'm wanted Dead or alive I'm a cowboy On a steel horse I ride It was a cold and rainy night. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to the truck simulator. All right, so I slept, woke up in the rain in the middle of the night. Let's see what we got going on in quick jobs. Hopefully, Plasters and Sun will have something. We are in San Fran. I need to go. No, I need to go Freight Market. What am I doing here? Freight Market. San Francisco. We got chart Plaster and Sons. Wow, not a lot around here, huh? Let's see what's in Oakland. Not much better. Wow. St. Nicholas? No. Kind of dud jobs this time, man. We need to make some money here. Oh, what do we got? Mm. Charged us a bit further away. I'm right next to Plaster and Sons. Let's just take this. Maybe. They're both $24 a mile. This one's a little bit higher. I like where this one's going better, though. I haven't seen... Have I not unlocked... I didn't unlock Carson City? What? I thought we'd been there. Haven't we been there? Oh, well. Who knows? Let's go pick it up. It's kind of going back on the route that we came on, huh? A little bit different route once we get there, though. The reason why I picked Plaster and Sons should become apparent. Because there it is, right up there. Not here. Well, you know what? Let's check and see what these guys got. I think these are the cheaper ones. If I'm not mistaken. Come on. I'm gonna run out of air brake by the time I get there. Yeah, 3,000 and 8,000. Forget that. They're fragile. San Diego. Well, that's a long way for 8,000 bucks. 3,000 to Fresno. Nah. What's that? Yeah, it's a super short run. I mean, it's a good money, but. Uh, I want something a little bit longer for the show. The show must go on. Seth? What? That was Europe only. In America, we don't have ferry boats. We don't even know what a ferry boat is. That's not true. There are very few places that need a ferry boat to get access in America. There are some islands. Amazingly, we actually live close to some of them. That is the Kelly's Island, uh, Putin Bay, Pele Island in Canada. All of those islands. Oak Island, yeah. No, they have a causeway. Most places in the United States are accessible without a ferry boat. Now, back in the day... Uh, the Honey Badger and some other ships would travel from Milwaukee over to Michigan. I think maybe it was Muskegon, maybe? There was a, a ferry boat that would take train cars from, instead of the train having to go all the way down south and around through Chicago, they would take them across the lake in these giant ferry boats. But that was probably the last heavy duty ferry boats that went on, at least in our region. There are some. I mean, there are ferry boats here and there, but in most places in the United States, no. I know in New York, I think there were ferry boats for a long time. But we tend to just build bridges and then we don't have... You know, the big reason would be because, like, okay, let's say you need to go to Norway or England. I mean, England, obviously, is an island. Or London, United Kingdom, whatever. Uh, United Kingdom, I'm sorry. London is a city. Uh, but if you need to go to Great Britain or you need to go to United Kingdom or whatever they call it now, um, you'd have to take a ferry boat because it's an island. Now, they have the tunnel, too. They have the channel. So that's another option. Uh, you hop on a train 
that then takes you across. I, yeah, I can't hear you, Seth. You're gonna have to sit up and talk louder. I, I can't hear you. It's really loud outside of the truck. Did I drive all the way over here with my headlights off? Ooh. It's getting late. Quite a storm going on out there. This looks like Cleveland weather in the summer. <laughs> it does rain a lot in San Francisco. I believe they have nightly fogs too, which I like. I like it, the fog rolls in and then sometime mid morning it rolls back out again. I don't think it's all year round like that, but it's seasonal, but maybe it is all year, I don't know. I like it though, because sometimes it starts off like this, and then by the end of the day, it's like a beautiful sunny day. In Ohio, it just stays like this <laughs> for like a week. <laughs> we get those uh, like monsoon weeks in, in Ohio, so it's like a it's like a summer thing. There's always at least one week in the summer where it's like 55 and raining the entire week. I remember one time we went to summer camp on Kelly's Island at uh, Camp Patmos and uh, it rained the whole time I was there. It rained the entire time I was there. Like from the day we got there, it started raining when we arrived and then it rained. And I took, that was the year that I took. Usually I just, my mom would drop me off there. You know, she'd take, we'd take the ferry boat over to the island and she'd just drop me off at uh, camp. But uh, that particular year, I decided to take the ferry boat from Sandusky. So it wasn't even the it wasn't the normal ferry that you are used to riding, Seth. When we go over there, like those flat ones that carry the cars. This was an old school, like built in the 1940s, or maybe even 1930s. Like, man, eh, probably 1940s because it was a diesel engine. So. Uh, it had room on underneath for cars. It had a bottom deck where the cars would park, and then the people would, would would load onto the top deck. It was pretty cool. It was actually the Good Time 1. So you know the Good Time 2? And then the Good Time 3, what's downtown now? They have, they have a, a tour boat called the Good Time 3. Uh, the Good Time 2. Uh, the Good Time 1 w was retired, and it became that ferry. So did they, did they all do tours? Yeah, one of the unique things about... Um, about that tour is that or about that boat ride though is that the ferry that you take from Marblehead to, to Kelly's Island is only a, about a half an hour ride the ferry from Sandusky was was about an hour and a half so you went because you started in Sandusky Bay and then went way out around the Catawba Peninsula and then to the Kelly's Island and then the Kelly's Island uh, so it started further away and that it was always a really cool a, a really cool run um, I'm going to stay about 40 miles an hour here I know the people behind me are gonna be mad, but they'll get over it. But uh, it was a fun. That was a fun ride. So anyway, we got over there. It started raining. <sighs> I'm tired. I got. This is the last episode tonight. We'll upgrade that guy's truck and then we'll go to bed. <laughs> we'll call it a night. Um, and so I drove over and spent the week there, and we were just soaked. I mean everything and we had fun I, don't get me wrong it was a great camp it was warm so it was like you know 60 65 degrees outside and the rain occasionally was cold or occasionally the rain was warm and uh but you know usually when we're there we would be, you know be riding sailboats and riding bikes and hanging out and having a really good time and this was this time we were all we were stuck inside the whole time so it happened to be the second year that i was learning how to play guitar so i just hung out with the guys and we made a little band and played for a couple of the services and it, it was fun we had a good time but uh how can this be the oh we're going that same back road oh man this is gonna be fun at night yeah we're taking the we slept they finished the job and now we're taking the mutt back hey, wait, yeah, you're right. 
Yeah, we're, we're going back with the same equipment. <laughs> It's going to a different location, yeah. It's not going back where it came from, but close. Uh, so anyway, the uh, the the um, we spent the whole week inside. It was fun though. I, I did have a good time. And then on the way back, we rode the ferry again. And this time on the way back, it rained the whole ride. And it's you know there was an inside part to the ferry and an outside part. So inside. yeah, no, I stayed outside actually, and and. It was really cool because it was like this sheet, the sheeting rain with fog. So you're going along on the boat when you, you can see like 10 feet out ahead of you with the waves and stuff. And I was like, man, this is like probably, yeah, it was really cool. It was like being in a movie. It was really neat. Those were the best days of my life. Back in the summer of 89. <laughs> it was probably actually like 92. <laughs> Back in the summer of 92. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Oh well. <laughs> yes, Seth. Uh, you gotta sit up, I can't hear you. Ryra said he's probably just gonna stay home tomorrow and watch me. Hmm. <sighs> alright. Nah, alright. We'll see, Seth. Uh, you're probably gonna go. Honey, it's church is at noon. We're arguing about going to church tomorrow. Seth wants to stay home. Ryan is sick, so I don't want him to go. But I was gonna. The girls really want to go, so my my wife is gone for the weekend. So I'm gonna take the girls to church tomorrow and, and mate her. But uh, Seth is Seth was going to go too, and now he's saying he doesn't want to go. No, he's going. You're too young to have a choice. Ryan is sick, that's why he's staying home. You're not oh, sick. Dang, we are like right on the edge with our time limit here. So we're gonna have to just deliver. I don't think I'm gonna get to sleep. My guy's gonna have to go into the red as far as his sleep pattern, but he'll survive. Well, I'm like way off the road here. This is just a really interesting pass. I like it though. It's got to be based on reality. The Camino Real. Uh, there was a road that uh, El Camino Royal uh, was in Santa Barbara. If you drive up the mountain to the very top, there's a road that rides along the ridge, the mountain ridge. Uh, on one side to the right is the desert and like the, you know, San Andreas area. Uh, and then on the, and to the left is the ocean and Santa Barbara and like all the, the va the valley. And that's not really a valley, but it goes down to, you know, Santa Barbara. And you just drive along this mountaintop and it was, re it was really cool. It was a really neat, uh, yeah, I drove on it. Yeah. I do that a lot. When I go out West, when I was a kid, I would do it. And as an adult when I get chances to work out there, if I have free time, like after work or whatever, I, I I just go drive. I drive, I try to find roads that nobody else goes on, and I just drive up there. One time I found a place in, um, I want to say it was Santa Cruz, my friend and I were driving around. And... <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Falling asleep at the wheel. Oh. Um, I got, okay, so I was on this project, and our boss like sent us out to San Francisco to do the project in San Francisco. Well, this is right before Y2K and already the the boom was over. And so we got out to San Francisco in November and this dude, the dudes that were there at the shop, they didn't have any work. Like it was a computer company that I worked for and but we were we were doing an internal, sorry, I just pressed the wrong button. We were doing an internal upgrade. So it was a uh, uh, you know, like a I thought I was going to have to turn there and I was going to miss it. So we had this email system. We were all on Banyan and uh, we were upgrading our system from Banyan to Microsoft. Which, of course, you know, <laughs> there are those of you out there that are older that would say that was a mistake. And it, it probably was. But we were, we were moving to Exchange from, from Banyan. Uh, and we were also upgrading all the network infrastructure, putting in new, new uh, servers 
putting in new uh, routers, hubs, switches, and then also replacing all the network cable and cleaning up their network closets. That was all part of the project. And I was on this project. So we went from company branch to company branch internally uh, and started doing these, you know, replacements. Well, we got out to San Francisco. We had a whole week booked out there. And uh, so it was like, oh, yeah, we're going to have, you know, we'll get out there. Maybe we'll have some time to sightsee, but we're probably going to be working. Usually, traditionally, when we would go to these sites, we would work and work and work. I mean, it was like you'd get off like at 8 o'clock at night, and you'd have to have the project done in a week. So we were just constantly working on stuff with very little breaks until like like past dinner time. And then by the time you got out of work, it was getting to be dark, you know. But I was like, man, I hope we get a chance to, you know, drive around. My friend Steve had never been to San Francisco. And I was like, dude, we got we to, gotta, you know, go out there and just drive around, you know, see the sights. Well, we get to California Monday morning to get to San Francisco. And it turns out that these guys, since it was Y2K and they didn't, they were already, none of them had uh, assignments that they just did the... They got all the equipment in that we sent them and they just put it in themselves. <laughs> so we literally were done with the project in like two hours. They had already done everything. They read the instructions that they'd sent to us and these guys just went ahead and did it. <laughs> and so <laughs> we're like, uh, so should we, we called our boss and we're like, do we need to buy tickets and start coming back? And he's like, no. He's like, listen, I have you assigned to this project. You're assigned to this project for the next six months. Uh, if you go back to your offices, they're going to pull you into other projects. I just want you on this project. So, no, you just stay out there. Enjoy yourself. Uh, we were scheduled for a week out there. So, Steve and I spent the entire week just driving around. We went to, um, I think it was called Battery Park. It's not the same Battery Park that's in California. And I've talked about this a little bit here before. But we watched the sunrise because, you know, we were still on Eastern time. So, getting up at like 4 o'clock in the morning was easy. We'd get up at 4 and... We drove down to this uh, this park like that overlooked the Golden Gate Bridge in Alcatraz, and we watched the sun come up. And I know it was awesome. Drove across the Golden Gate Bridge, and then we went down. I took Steve down to Santa. He'd never been to Santa Cruz, so here we are in November. He and I are in like shorts and t-shirts, and everybody else is walking around like in jeans and sweatshirt jackets. And we're like, dude, it's like 75 degrees. You, we, they're, they're all, everybody looked like they were freezing, and I'm like, man, it's like 30 degrees back and snowing back in Cleveland, you know. <laughs> so. Anyway, it was a very memorable experience. What I was getting at of this whole story is while we were in Santa Cruz, uh, we drove up on the way back out. We hit this little side road, and I'm like, hey, let's go up there, you know? So we drove up onto the mountaintops in this neighborhood. And it had to be, you know, I don't know, probably movie stars or something, but it's this gorgeous neighborhood up on top of a mountain. And um, there were these, uh, it was above, I'm going to get this wrong. The southernmost airport in the San Francisco region. There's, there's uh, San Francisco International. There's Oakland International, and there's the one to the south. It's something Field Moffat Field. It's it's not Sausalito. It's it's like Silicon Valley. I can't think of the name of the airport. Oh. It's got three Palo Alto. And so these airplanes, these you know commercial jets were coming in and they were landing at Palo Alto and we're up on top of this mountain and the jets, it was so cool. Like where we were so high up and these jets would fly over maybe 150, 200 feet off the top of these mountains. Uh, and, but we were still so high up on this mountain that the jets still had their landing gear up and all of their, you know, they were still tucked in for flying. Now they would fly right over us, like right over the top of us. And then they get down below where we were, so we were looking down on top of them, and you could see the landing gear come down and the flaps come out, and then they'd make their turn into uh, into Palo Alto, and it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like I've never actually stood somewhere where you were above an airplane before it was in its landing configuration. Like it just it was the weirdest thing to have these airplanes go down below you and watch them go into the pattern, which was all happening below you, like. It was so cool. <laughs> I love it out there. I just love it. I love Santa Cruz. Uh, when I was a kid, I was out there and we went to um, Big Trees Railroad. They had like a um, hang on. It was like a logging. It was I forget what it was. I'm trying to think of what it was called. It was something at Toltec and Big Trees or something like that, and they had like these. Um, Shea, Shea steam locomotives 
that were designed for logging, and they would uh, they would go up the mountainside. So like you'd start at the bottom. Yeah, it was really cool. You'd start in Santa Cruz. They had a train that would come into town, and um, and uh, it was a diesel engine. And you'd jump on the diesel engine in these like open cars. They were you'd sit on them, and it was all open, so you'd just be sitting out there in the sun, you know. And you would uh, you'd hop on these cars. I know this is do not enter, but I'm doing it anyway. Listen, we're gonna play like it's really America. In America, you can drive in either way, like I said. Um, and so these, you know, these, these shale, then they would take you to like halfway up the mountain with that train. You'd go up out of the city and into the woods, up into the redwood forest. And then you would, you would get on these shea locomotives that would take you from Roaring Camp up to the top of the mountain where the logging used to happen. Yeah. And so you'd be up on top of this mountain and, and you were, uh, you were surrounded by, uh, by, um, my brain is like it's, it's just getting really late now. This is what happens. Obviously, I start. Uh, they they were surrounded by these uh, by these redwood forests. So you had these trees that were three, two two to three hundred feet tall, like the tallest trees you've ever seen, Seth. Yeah, I know. Redwoods are Yeah, they weren't the big one. They weren't the giant sequoias like a King, at Kings Canyon sequoia, like uh, the General Sherman tree. These were um, the other kind. There's two kinds of redwoods. There's the giant sequoia. And then there's whatever they call these redwood trees, <laughs> which the not giant sequoias, but they're st these are actually taller than the giant sequoias, but they're they're thinner. No, these aren't the ones you can drive. Well, there's some of them that you can drive through, but really, the giant sequoias are the ones that you drive through. Yeah, and those all died anyway. Well, they killed them. You know, it's it's not really good for the tree to have a road going through it. But. Uh, so, and the, I think it was the Henry Muir, like M-U-I-R, Muir, Muir, something like that, National Forest, that it was, that it, it bordered next to. So you could walk from the the Roaring Camp train station right over to this park where all the, all these redwood trees were. It was, it, it I'll remember for the rest of my life. It, it's a, it, it just, it was incredible. Did you climb any? No, I did not climb any. Here's our, here's our rest airport, but we're not going to be resting tonight. We're going to keep going. Or this morning at this point. So anyway, if you ever have a chance and you're in Santa Cruz, if it's still open, and it probably is, those kind of... Usually the steam train stuff stays open forever. Like it's... Like the Cass Scenic Railroad, that's still going. That's been going since, like, you know, for 50 years now. Because really, there aren't that many places anymore that do steam trains. So, you know, if they have them, they become a pretty uh, sought-after commodity and people people travel all over the world to see them so sorry ryan's doing the dishes could you be a little noisier ryan I can't hear you. yeah i know go tell him to quiet down please <laughs> sorry guys yeah i know because it's, it's, it's got his uh his uh Europe bl blasting. Yeah, he listens to Europe. He loves Europe. Whoa. Uh, okay. I just had a band Bandicam hiccup. I don't know how much of that I just got recorded, but that was a little weird. Uh, Bandicam just totally hiccuped. Well, it sh it, it's supposed to turn off and turn back on again to record, but it looked like it just had an error. So we might have a, a section there that didn't get recorded. So I apologize if that's the case, but nothing really exciting happened. Unless you missed the end of the story. We're going to pause for a second and check what we missed here. Hang on, folks. Nope, everything is fine. Now, I am sometime here. I'm going to need to test it. I, there's an issue that I have, which I don't love. Uh, you'll notice in bandy cam sometimes when I'm talking. Oh, God, I pulled over here. And I'm never going to get back on the road now. That guy's let me out. Um... As Bandicam, I have it set to cut the files into three gigabyte files uh, for processing reasons, though I don't really know that I need to do that anymore. Uh, older hard drives, Windows had a four gigabyte limit, but now I think that we're past that because I, I make files all the time that are much larger than that and I don't have an issue. So I'm going to try to mess around with Bandicam at some point. It won't be like a, a sincere recording because it'll probably get ruined, but I'm going to try to turn the limits off and that way, if it works, 
we'll be able to eliminate most of the skips that you guys see. The other thing that I've been having go on, and I, I had this, I did a recording session with Mitsutayu uh, regarding spin tires and or starring spin tires, and. I had an issue where two segments of the video got lost, including the end segment, which really sucks because we did some, we had like a little fun competition at the end of the video where we try to like race to get to um, the last unlocked truck. And it start, I got the beginning of it, but then it cut the whole end of that video clip off because it was making a new file and the file got corrupted. So I am going to look into trying to make it so that Bandicam doesn't have to stop and restart so that that doesn't happen anymore, hopefully. Of course, the other downside is, though, if, if I do it, then it's going to... If, if I do have a cut, I'm going to lose the whole thing. <laughs> but that being said, usually if you miss the middle of the video anyway, it kind of makes the video worthless. I've had that happen before, but I'm just I'm starting to have some issues with it where it's corrupting some of my files. And I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that. It doesn't do it for all my games, but some of my games it does that. So like uh, Space Engineers, it's done it. What's that? Spin Tires. Spin Tires, obviously, yeah, I just said that. No, I haven't had it happen with World of Tanks. No, just Space Engineers and um, Spin Tires. And I never had problems before with Spin Tires, so it's kind of a weird issue, but I'll get it figured out. Hopefully. Well, I'm going to miss this truck. Uh, obviously, I still have a lot more running to do in it. I probably will be sick of it by the time I'm ready to get rid of it. Yeah, I'm going to move up to the W900 or over to. I love this truck. And this truck's going to stay in my company. So I can always drive it. If I ever decide that I want to go back to it, I can always go back to it. I would like to get one of the newer Kenworth trucks, too. So what we'll do is we'll go to the 900. We'll use that for our, our middle of the series series. And then we'll move over to the 900. Or we'll move over to the 690. The last truck that I haven't driven yet. We'll, up, we'll buy one of those and upgrade it. And, and then hopefully by then, this game will start having... I don't know why I keep doing that. I'm, I'm trying not to... Okay, I will be fine now. Look at that. I got three... No, I won't be fine. Four hours and 32 minutes. Three hours and 33 minutes. So I'm going to be going into the red here with my rest break. But I have to go. I, I don't have enough time. Well, we're in Nevada now, so we get a higher speed limit. Hopefully by that time they'll have started adding new trucks in. I, I don't know how many they're going to give us for free uh, before they start becoming DLCs. I don't mind if they do a DLC structure. I just hope they keep them affordable, that it's not going to be like a train sim thing where every new truck is like $40. I mean, I'll be willing to buy new ones, but if the, if the trucks are more expensive than the game, that's going to be a little disappointing. I don't think they'd be that stupid. I think they'll probably release them for like 10 bucks. Yeah, like how Farm Sim is like 10 bucks, but I don't know. Every company is different. It's weird. I thought I turned the diagonals off so that wouldn't happen, but you can see there I was pressing my cruise control up to 70 and uh, or 75, and I, I by mistake kind of crossed, did it, and it made my map come back up. Oops, sorry. <laughs> We're at 60. <laughs> Right? No, 55. Moving up to 60. Almost at 70. we got to hit that top speed because uh, with my sleeping conditions, we need to get there fast. I can't... Almost blew it again, man. Whoa. Jeez. Tell I'm Russian. I'm Russian. No Russian. That was an almost accident right there. Thankfully there was no traffic, but I almost didn't stop. Lelly? Oh, are you still awake, Lel? He's starting to fall asleep. He's still awake, but he's so cute. Lelly. 
You gotta speak up, honey. I got the headphones. Oh, well, we're gonna go up to bed here in a minute. No, it's not gonna be much further. Like, probably 10 more minutes. Alright, so we are in Tanopa. My guy's yawning. Things are not looking good. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, it's like we gotta go slow here because it's a town. Oh no, we got one of these stupid intersections. It's gonna take us 45 minutes to get across this. Is that car right there? There's a Mustang right there. That's what he said. Uh, maps, I don't have time. Characters. Hot freight, hot freight, look out. I'm such a jerk, but. Hey, too bad for you. Don't have time to mess around there, man. We gotta get out. We gotta get the lead out. So you can't tell these mirrors. It's hard to tell when someone's next to you. That was really close. I started to go over, and then all of a sudden somebody was there. No, he gets the... You've seen it before. He blacks out. Dang it. I'm, I swear to God, I'm pressing straight up, and it keeps bringing that stupid menu up. Oh man, this is gonna be close. Oh Son of a gosh. biscuit. Come on. It's hard because I have to reach over with my other hand to really do it right, so I don't want to let go of my steering wheel. Unfortunately, I gotta slow down. These corners are pretty steep. What are you talking about? Yeah, you have to. Okay, so you have to set the car up right. You have to get the weight transferred to the front. You like you transfer it to the front and then turn the wheel and get it to transfer. Start transferring back to the back of the car. Once the back starts swinging around, you can pull the handbrake and it continues that motion. <laughs> it's like a science. <laughs> Engineered. Oh no, we hit it. Yeah, I'm, I'm yawning in real life too. I'm like, Ugh. now I wonder. Let's see. This is Nevada. Is that Lake Mead? There's a, there's a couple large reservoirs reservoirs in. Uh, The sign was too blurry for me to see it. We went by it so fast. Uh, that could be Lake Mead and Hoover Dam. I wonder if Hoover Dam is in here. I bet you it is. There's some kind of something up there. Some kind of something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe there's your destination. Oh, thank God. Unfortunately, we can't sleep there, though. Yeah, this is short one. My Todd, the singer of the band that I was in, he went, his family vacationed in uh, in Nevada one time on the lakes. They, I guess it's a popular thing in Nevada to to rent a boat. And, uh, sorry, my joystick's not. Oh, uh, getting tired. It's a good thing I don't need to know where to go. Okay, there we go. We're going to a mining operation this time. Come on, what the heck? Turn the steering wheel, dude. And so he's like, he said, he's like, yeah, I'm out in Nevada. He's like, I'm just trying to figure out what to do with dirt because that's all they got. <laughs> it's just dirt and more dirt. 
and then some water. But the, anyway, the people people rent uh, houseboats, and they uh, yeah they stay on the, they stay on the houseboat. I don't know if they fish, but they probably do. But there's huge lakes, obviously, near and around Vegas, and Hoover Dam is what causes oh gosh, those. Huge yeah, it's a big mine. Whoa! Water at the bottom. Okay. Another guy frantically sweeping. He's like, ah. Hopefully, I made that the right way. Let's see if we're gonna make it on here. Die nope, not in the not in the least bit. Okay, so we need to unfortunately back this up. I can't hear a word you're saying, Seth. It's really loud outside the truck. Oh. There's water down the bottom of the mine, too. That happens a lot. Hold on, Seth. Just gonna pull that on there. Yep. There we go. We made it. Good. Scales. All right. So where are we going? It's showing me, but I'm not seeing. Hmm. It's on the other side. I think you're right. Well, at least this time we didn't damage the mutt yet. Oh, come on, grip, baby. There we go. Came in the wrong way. <sighs> Dang it. Yeah, I don't have time for this, but that sucks. I'm totally oriented the wrong way. Alright, here's what we're gonna have to do. Nope, oh, I should have gone the other way. It's, you can never tell. I've never been here before, so I didn't know. Here in real life, you know, the guys would tell you, oh, you're going to make a left and then make a right, and it's right back there. But we don't have that luxury because it's not real life. We're going to have to go all the way back out here. I have to get somewhere where I can get enough space to turn around, and I don't have that right here. So there we go. There's no space here. So there should be. Turn them wheels. Come on. What are you waiting for? Oh, this way. That's what the sign right there that I didn't see it says this way. Okay. There's stuff all over the place here, man. This way. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, I know he's tired. I know you're tired. You. And I'm tired too. We're both tired. Me and the driver. And unfortunately, like I said, we're not really near anything where we can sleep, I don't think. Yeah, maybe at that crossroads we passed. I didn't get that right. Yeah, you try to rush things, that's what happens. Alright, back this bad boy up. Come on, get him in there. How do I lose forty thousand or ten thousand dollars? What? What did you do? Two payments, maybe? Oh, son of a biscuit! It's not gonna let me do it. I gotta pull out all the way. No, I mean they're just they're being how it should be, but. not the trailer is like slipping of course it is gravel that should do it there we go oh, that was fun easy parking spot really but and we still probably don't have enough money wow 
Some days you just don't make anything. Look at that. Because of that stupid loans. Well, but you gotta pay the loan back, but that was... Man, that's a dud. So I have to go another episode. Not tonight. <laughs> no, not tonight. <laughs>